What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the HQ. Welcome back to the channel. We are joined, as always, by Dr. Pirate Jesse Morse over there of the Fantasy Doctors. Uh, we are filming this on Halloween, so he is in good spirits. I already dressed up for the Fade the Public that released yesterday morning on Halloween, so that's my pass for why I'm not dressed up right now. Would you just go trick-or-treating with the kids? How many kids you got over there? I'm at work all day. I'm in my office. <laughs> oh, so you're just- I'm doing actually seeing patients right now. Okay, okay. Respect. But uh, I don't do injections with the eye patch on. I take the eye patch off. Yeah, I would hope not. If I walked in and saw you there, I'd be like, Doc, listen, is there, any, is there anybody else in the building right now? Because You should have saw the facial expressions from the patients this morning. I, yeah, I could have. Priceless. Hey, man, I love that, though. I love when I go around on Halloween and there's people dressed up at their work spot, whether it's like a cafe or, I guess, a, a doctor's office. Yeah. That, that's always, it's always a lot. All the girls in the office are. They're all mermaids and I'm the pirate. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Tonight. All right. Let's but, uh, yeah, we got a, a lot of people keep popping up on this list. I, I've been a little out of whack this week, uh, so I just trying to keep up with it. Um, yeah. I think only one more uh, that, uh, that uh, we will talk about uh, that is not on your list is T.Y. Hilton. I don't know if it was on there. Um, yeah, it wasn't on there because I thought he, I, you know, Hilton gets a lot of rest days, so I kind of figured that's just what yeah. it was. But now he's no, not. No, I think this sounds a little bit more serious. Okay. Yeah, we'll touch on him when we get to the wide receivers. But as always, we'll start off with the quarterbacks. Before we jump in, if you all find this uh, information valuable, as always, make sure you smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Subscribe to the Fantasy Doctors channel. Follow us on the Twitter accounts, which you'll find right down below, and any other um, social media accounts will be in the description. So quarterbacks, I mean, we could touch on Mahomes again. He had the, uh, you know, the, the knee issue that he's dealing with, and we talked about it pretty in-depth last weekend, so I don't want to go too crazy. He's been getting in a lot of limited practices. Your yeah. stance, I'm assuming, is still that he needs to take off this week and probably return in week 10. I think it's reasonable uh, to at least for him to take it off. I don't know. I have a weird feeling he's going to be like a game time decision. Me too. Um, I, I don't think it's in his best interest, but I also haven't evaluated him. Yeah. Uh, just going by what the data says for these injuries, uh, when the best time is three weeks taking off is, is, is ideal. Um, but he, I'd say there's a, a 50, 50 chance of him playing it at this point in time. Okay. And I'm, I'm assuming, you know, um, that if he's in the game, you have to play him, even if it's this week. I mean, I, I think there's a couple better plays this week. Uh, Lamar is kind of an interesting play versus New England. Yeah. Uh, I think, as you saw last week with Chubb, just completely was ridiculous on the ground. I think Lamar has that same ability. Uh, I mean, remember, they don't really have many defenders, uh, any any receivers. Like, they got like, like two. I mean, if, if Andrews and if, if, if Brown decides to play. So, it's like they're probably going to try to focus on him. And then Minshew has a smash spot. So, yeah. there's some better plays that you may have also on your team. Yeah, it's probably only going to be if um... – if you really have another good spot, like you said, Minshew's great. Obviously, Russell. I, I can't imagine a team that has both Russell Wilson and Patrick Mahomes, but Wilson against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the flip side, I think Winston yeah. against Seattle is a pretty good play. But yeah, there's some other uh, some other interesting uh, starts. So he's not really the plug and play overall yeah. quarterback. I mean, one based his on mobility is going to be limited. He's going to be wearing a pretty decent sized brace. We saw how he was recently. He just hasn't really looked like himself because he doesn't have that same mobility that he you're used to seeing with him, which is what creates those openings, which is what creates those crazy big plays. I mean, if not, you're relying on guys like Hardman and, and, and Hill just to just be bananas, which they can be, but it helps when um, Mahomes throws them open as opposed to just hopes that they're open. Yeah. Uh, interesting to note also with Hardman, he had the big play last week, but he only played on about eight snaps. I think he ran yeah. about four routes. So Demarcus Robinson is the third guy. He actually plays more snaps than Sammy Watkins. It's, you know, it's Hill, Watkins, uh, Robinson but honestly as a Hill owner somewhere where I really need Hill to you know continue being the player that we want him to be I want Mahomes to rest one more week um, so he can get back to full strength and have that mobility and use Hill on the outside accordingly let's jump over to Denver I know we don't have to talk about this too much because it's not like you're starting a Denver quarterback in your fantasy lineup anytime soon. But, but yeah if you are then I don't even know how you're still watching fantasy football videos at this point your team is probably 0-8 but Joe Flacco uh, you know, he comes out after the game and he talks about how they need to be more aggressive. He's basically talking shit about all the coaches and their game plans yep. and things like that. Immediately we hear that, you know, he's not going to be starting next game, something with the neck injury and everyone's, you know, laughing at it, assuming that that was like their way of saying that he's getting benched. 
Now it comes out that he's going to see other doctors and stuff and he has a bulging disc in his neck. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm assuming this isn't something that they would just make up and keep playing along with this way of benching. Right. It's obviously serious, right? Yeah. So I treat these almost every day. Unfortunately, these are quite common. Okay. Um, it sounds like this is more neck than back. Um, so you treat them similarly. Uh, both require uh, usually oral steroids. Sometimes we do something called gabapentin. Uh, either way, he's going to be out uh, a good three to five weeks, somewhere around there. I wouldn't be surprised if they put him on IR. Yeah. Uh, he may need an epidural, which is where we put cortisone into that channel, into that space around the nerve. Um, he actually did, he had one appointment in LA and another one in Connecticut. So uh, that's a lot of travel with a banged up neck to get evaluations. So yeah, just is this, is this right. like a situation now? It doesn't, I mean, three to five weeks, obviously it's a little bit of time, but it's, it's nothing of long-term concern because, you know, Joe Flacco has been like, I, I can't imagine that at one point again this season, he's their starting quarterback because you have Brandon Allen coming in. Drew Locke should be ready to roll in a couple of weeks. I'm sure they want to see with the, like a lost season, if they lose a couple more games, they're going to want to see what yeah. they have with him. So mm -hmm. with Joe Flacco, I mean, like, if you're in a dynasty league, he's obviously rostered, especially in like super flex dynasty leagues, which are more popular nowadays. Um, he's not someone that you want to just let go because this isn't, this isn't an injury that's going to, you know, linger. Maybe Flacco ends up on the fucking Bengals or something next season where, you know, he's still a starting quarterback in the NFL. You never know. Yeah. I mean, no, this doesn't impact him uh, next year, so to speak. Okay. Uh, these are, are, are usually acute flares are painful acutely, but they usually go away and, and, and most of these guys can do really well uh, without um, having long-term issues. Okay. Um, a quarterback I want to ask about in terms of long-term issues is Cam Newton. Now they're saying he's back at practice in some sort of limited fashion. He's dealing with the Liz Frank. Mm -hmm. He's not playing week nine. Uh, I'm assuming he's probably not going to play in week 10, but week 11 at home versus Atlanta seems like a good return timetable, assuming that the foot is healthy. Now, with this Liz Frank injury, what we've heard as just like sports fans is that it's a very serious injury, of course. Is this something that like Cam can – is it possible that we're going to see a 100% healthy Cam this season? Or is this something in which like he's going to need off-season surgery to get back to who he was at some point? You know, like is this uh, – how much confidence do you have in Cam if he does return? I don't – I think he's at high risk for injury. Okay. Um, I think that there's a chance he comes back but I don't think he'll technically be a hundred percent. And he, um, I don't expect him to get surgery unless he re-injures it again. This is the same surgery that Marquise Brown had in the off season. Um, this is a, a, an annoying surgery, but once you fix it, it's good. Uh, but if you don't fix it, you're just waiting for it to heal and you're trying to do all this other stuff. It takes a lot of time. So um, there's a chance that he will be back uh, in the next week or two. Um, but his mobility is a major part of his game. So you don't want him to be restricted by his movement. And that's what this injury will do. This is like basically the arch of your foot. This is the stability point of your foot. So if you can't even uh, move and pivot and stand and, and be aggressive, you're not going to be very effective if you're cam. And that's why he isn't comfortable probably going back out there yet, whether or not it's, it's the coach's decision, but, I, I don't know if he's quite there yet. These do take a lot of time to heal. Okay. But it is possible that it, it can fully heal within the time frame that he's given himself. Yeah. So far? yeah. yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. There is a, there's a chance that it will fully heal. Very good chance it will fully heal uh, in the next two to three weeks. Okay, cool. So I, he's someone I, I would suggest that Sash, if you are uh, streaming quarterbacks, because I'm sure I'll have some good matchups down the stretch just being in the NFC South. Um, you can always use a little bit of quarterback help there uh let, let's stick with the liz frank injury because we have a guy marquise brown who started off the year just exploding and it seemed like he was going to be a big time breakout player right the first rookie off the mm -hmm. nfl uh draft board this year and then he dealt with this ankle <laughs> your boy's sliding down there he's, sliding, he's the, hungry yeah he dealt with the ankle injury uh that's kept him sidelined for a few weeks now and he finally returned to practice and it seems like he's going to be a go against the patriots now we won't really talk about the matchup per se, because this is obviously a very tough matchup. Their cornerbacks yeah. have been shut down in every aspect. So he's, he's not a suggested play right now. Uh, he's dealing with his ankle injury, obviously coming off the Liz Frank surgery in the summer. Uh, do you think the two are related? And do you think this ankle injury is something that might like linger on? Or do you think Brown can get back to where he was in the beginning of this year going forward? I think he could be a possible buy low if you're not too concerned about his health moving forward. 
this is a good and, and, and question I've been asking myself for a while now, but the problem is we haven't got clarification on it. I have not been able to confirm, first of all, which foot he had the surgery on. Okay. I've looked in like a million places and I've never seen them identify which foot it was. Um, and then also, I don't know which ankle this is. So without knowing that, I mean, you're going to have some, some issues of the same side. You're going to have some issues if it's the opposite foot because of compensatory mechanisms. But if they're on the same side, it's one thing. It's on the other side. There's still some risk, but it's not as crazy. Um, is this actually a foot injury? They're just calling an ankle. Is this truly an ankle? Um, he's obviously missed a couple of weeks. He only practiced partially today. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's not even super exciting. Uh, that the fact that he's got an additional week off and he's on Thursday, a typical practice, you know, semi to full practice day. And he still didn't practice. So, you know, to extent that he should have. So while I think there's a very good chance he plays, I'm a little concerned about re-injury at this time. We know he's ridiculously dynamic when he's on the field, but he's a little dude. Yeah. You know, he's like, he's like smaller than like Amendola is like, he's a little guy. So uh, I love his upside, but I just don't trust this foot ankle. Yeah. I hear you. I'm, I'd be a little bit nervous about it too. Um, he's probably not someone I want to throw into my lineup coming right back off this injury. Then again, like week one, what did he have, like 13 snaps and ended up going yeah. touchdowns and 100 yards? So that's the kind of and upside, probably, like you said, he gives you on a weekly basis. But still, it's like – it's still yeah. nerve-wracking to throw a guy like that into your lineup. Yeah, um, it's like the Seattle guys. It's like they may get – you know, like like you saw what, um, what Coleman did last week for the 49ers. I think he had 14 rushes. He had four touchdowns. Yeah, he had four touchdowns, and he, he broke one tackle on the combined four touchdowns. So it was just yeah, like – that's – like you can't repeat – those odds are ridiculously hard to repeat. Yep. So like free games happen. I mean, if someone's running 13 routes a game, I don't feel very confident in them being consistent every week. Uh, of course not. But we did see the snap count jump up quickly. So yep. if, if the Patriots is a game in which he doesn't really get too much run – but he stays healthy. I mean, the rest of their schedule, they play Cincinnati, they play Houston, they play the Jets and Cleveland in their playoff That's matchups. Great. They have some tough matchups. Yeah. yeah, they got some tough matchups sandwiched in between that. But, I mean, there are some some plays in which you can get them into your lineup. So, uh, Marquise Brown is definitely a guy I'm interested in, in uh, looking at. Keeping on with, uh, with some purple jerseys over here. We got Adam Thielen. Uh, hamstring injury forced him to miss last game. We've seen Stephon Diggs blow up while Thielen's been gone. They play the Chiefs in Arrowhead, uh, and the Chiefs are a team that have not allowed a lot of points to outside wide receivers, but they do submit some points to the slot wide receivers. I put up a chart yesterday or two days ago on my Twitter account, uh, which you should follow down below, talking about the discrepancies between defenses and their fantasy points allowed to outside versus slot. And if Thielen is back, this hypothetically, you know, in theory, seems like a very, very good spot for him because they've had some very good cornerback play on the outside. So with Thielen um, – you know, how confident are you, I guess, throwing him back into your lineup this week? I'm assuming, like, if you own him, you're obviously going to have to do that if he is uh, playing and he's back to limited practices this week. So it seems like he's going to be ready to roll, right? Yeah, I, I think um, at this point, I'd say he's about a 75% chance of going. Pretty good. Yeah. Uh, if he gets at least a, a, a limited to full practice tomorrow, he's a go. The data for hamstring injuries is unique in that, uh, grade ones and grade twos, even though they're technically very different injuries, one's much worse than the other, their timelines are similar. Five days is, is the, kind of the shortest. 15 days is kind of the longest for most of these guys. So the 10-day the, the, the kind of sweet spot, and we're basically about that. Uh, so I, I would not be surprised to see him go. We saw them bring Diggs back a couple like, earlier in the year when he had a hammy, and he did – pretty good and he's been doing awesome ever since um so i would not be surprised to see him go and he could go he could have a very good game in light of how you have to attack the chiefs i mean of course you run on them and that they'll do that all day long yeah but they'll need to throw to help the run yeah so you fire Thielen up this week if he's playing oh yeah yeah, yeah. Sticking, yeah, I agree. With, yeah sticking within the uh, nfc south Devonte adams Monte Adams owners are dying for him to get back on the field. He's been dealing with this turf toe for what seems like the entire season at this point. He looks ready to go. He's back on practice. He's back in practice with full pads. He's doing sprinting. He's cutting and things like that. So it seems like he took the 
right amount of time off for this injury. He does get yep. a very tough matchup in which he'll probably get shadowed by uh, Casey Hayward, who, you know, year in and year out, including 2019, has been like a top six or seven out of 100-plus graded cornerbacks in terms of coverage. He'll likely see that shadow uh, treatment. But Devontae Adams is not a guy that you sit because of yeah, you start, um, you start. shadow treatment. You start regardless. So, uh, Turf Toe, it seems like he's going to – as long as he is, you know, active and playing, you play him, right? Correct, yeah. I think he finally turned the appropriate corner that he was looking for. I, I, uh, from what I saw, he practiced in full pads today, which is a very good sign. Um, he ha- he's confident in this toe and his ability to cut and run routes and, and feel semi-normal. So I think that uh, there's a very, very good chance he plays this week, which should help the team overall. And I think that overall he will have a – uh, a decent game. He may not go nuclear in light of uh, the the defense, but uh, I think Rodgers will be happy to have his buddy back. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm not someone who owns a lot of Devonte in season long, but I can imagine how frustrating it's been to own him. Uh, so I hopefully am. he's yeah, <laughs> you are. So hope, it's awful. I, I'm I'm juggling wide receiver twos and my wide receiver one, and I have like some mediocre guy in the wide receiver three role. It's awful. Yeah, we'll, we'll preface this by saying none of his analysis on Devontae Adams is bias, although he has a large share of – I can't I – can't, I, I, thought I thought he had true 20 TD potential this year uh, because I, I just thought it was a smash spot. But It just seemed like – I mean, it seemed like they needed a few extra weeks to really get that offense going and make them click. I bet if Devontae didn't get hurt, he was about to go on a fucking relentless run against yeah, – I mean, him. But you could see that this off- offense has potential. I mean oh, – yeah. I mean, yeah, allocate half or some of the touchdowns that Jones and all these random wide receivers have, give them to Adams, and he's probably already got, like, what, 10, 8, something like that? I'm actually very interested. As someone who owns Aaron Jones, like, everywhere, I'm, I'm really interested in, in what happens to his target counts because yeah. he's been fucking going too. off, you know, getting eight targets a game, six targets a game, and just putting up fantasy points left and right, a couple 40-point games this year. He, he's been a league winner, almost, I, I think. Uh, if you do not count week one from weeks two and he's the number one, eight, he's a number one running back in fantasy, right. which is yep. ridiculous. Um, I think Dalvin takes it if he, if you include week one. Yeah. Well, see, yeah. C Mac might be oh, so, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. above Dalvin, but yeah, if you discount week one, where both of them have blow up games, but like Aaron Jones has been great. Vontae Adams, obviously is going to cut into that target share a little bit because while he's been out, Aaron Rodgers has been targeting both Jones, Jamal Williams, even Jimmy Graham a little bit. So it's been interesting and it's going to be interesting going forward, but Aaron Rodgers doesn't really seem like a guy who's going to force it. He's going to, uh, you know, let these things happen. Um, but hopefully Devontae Adams will be back on the field. You fire him up if he is. Now, we talked about Gardner Minshew being in an absolute smash spot against the Houston Texans who have been getting absolutely killed. They've allowed three passing touchdowns or more in four straight games. They're without all of their cornerbacks. They're without now J.J. Watt, Torres Peck. They're going to have no pass rush on Gardner Minshew, which lines up with the way their offense plays in terms of downfield throwing because you have these speed guys between Conley and you got DJ Chark on the outside getting open downfield. But this does leave the underneath open for a guy like D.D. Westbrook. However, Westbrook left week eight's game with some neck and shoulder issues. He did not return. He's been limited this week. Now, Westbrook's been very on and off. That's just the type of player he is in fantasy. He's very volatile, um, but he does lower the – you know, the ceiling or, or hit the floor a little bit of these guys like Conley and DJ Chark if he does suit up. Um, so he's been, de- he's been dealing with the shoulder injury. What do we know about this? And uh, what are you thinking about the pass catchers there? Like what order would you have these guys ranked in if he does end up playing? So I love his potential. I'm just not a big fan of him continuing to re-injure this injury, you know, this shoulder and, and neck. It's not clear if it's a, if it's a neck herniated disc. Uh, or, or a pinch that's translating to the shoulder. If he has a separate shoulder injury, if he has both, yeah. that's possible too. Um, so uh, I, I just I, – I have a feeling he's going to probably play. I'm just not going to be happy about it, and I don't think he's – I think he's going to underperform. Um, I think Chark has been the go-to guy. I think Conley is kind of a sneaky underrated play if he's there. I think that there has to be some positive regression for Fournette. I mean, my God, 198 problem, huh? touches one touchdown it's craziness it's craziness and looking at this chart um houston is allowing 31 fantasy points per game to oppose outside wide receivers uh the number dips down they're ranked 27th in that respect but 18th against the slot wide receiver so it might be a game in which you know Minshew just 
bombs the ball downfield left and right. Chark and Conley both eat and have, uh, you know, get, get, get some Halloween candy going. We'll put it that way. So uh, D.D. Westbrook, I would say is nothing more than like a, a flex play if you're a little bit desperate during these bye weeks. But, you know, we've been, we've been seeing a lot of uh, – we'll bounce back to the, the, uh, a couple more wide receivers we want to finish with. But speaking of shoulder injuries, man, we're dealing with like four running backs that have shoulder injuries right now. Yep. We have James Conner. We have Miles Sanders. We have Royce Freeman. Now, Royce Freeman's been flying under the radar in terms of this injury because I haven't seen any updates from him. Like, I wrote some numbers down here before we jumped in, and, like, the split between Lindsey and Freeman has been very, very real. And Freeman's actually outsnapped Lindsey 289 to 257 on the year. They both have 31 targets. Uh, Freeman has 26 catches to 25 catches for Lindsey. 109 carries for Lindsey, 88 carries for Freeman on the year. But overall, what the, the point I'm getting at is these running backs have averaged 31 and a half touches per game. So if Freeman misses yeah, they're, time, they're eating. They're eating. They're, they're, it, it's workhorse. It's workhorse level RB one type volume. If either of these guys yeah. misses time, so right. I'm look. I don't know what you've heard about the Royce Freeman shoulder injury, but I haven't really seen any updates. I know it forced him to leave uh, last week's game, and he missed like the second half. So this could potentially be kind of serious. Let me see if I can find anything while we're talking. But um, so the issue, there's a couple things that that kind of. Um, will 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 play a wrinkle in this. Mm-hmm. Remember now that they uh, are are now dealing on a unproven quarterback. Right. So they don't have the luxury of Flacco. I mean even though he's not really a luxury. <laughs> the luxury of Flacco. Uh yeah, which sounds screwy, but nice uh, so now you, you know they make double or triple team Sutton. Uh, so now you're talking about like uh, there's a couple of guys I can't even think of right now. You got Hamilton who really didn't do much. So they're going to need both of these guys if um if if they're going to be potentially, you know, justifiably worth it to play, uh, you know, to even be decent. So uh, with the Flacco injury, let's see here, uh, held out of practice. Okay, that was yesterday. So let's see here. Yeah, I'm um, still not seeing anything on Freeman. Yesterday, um, they are saying Lindsay was limited with a wrist. Ooh, that's new. Um, and – Freeman didn't uh, practice. Freeman practiced in full. Wait, what? Are you sure? I'm looking at – this is from 22 hours ago. This is on Broncos Wire. Okay. Um, they have – yeah, they, they don't – they don't list Royce Freeman. All right, well – They list Phillips just- Lindsay as limited. Okay, well, you heard it here then. You don't need to worry about that and just disregard the last yep. fucking six minutes of us rambling and pretending we were – I mean, I think that. he's been banged up a lot, So I, I, but, but I do like him. I think he's, he's, he's been trending in the right direction. Yeah. So I think that – Now definitely- Freeman's getting the goal on touches too, so now you're seeing the yep. touchdowns start to sway him. Touches in the – like passing uh, – t- uh, targets in the backfield. So I, I think this is definitely a backfield you want to, uh, excuse me, invest in. Uh, kind of reminds me a little bit of um, when Coleman and Freeman were in the backfield at Atlanta. Yep. Like we're both were viable options. Uh, you just kind of have to pick your poison about who you want to go with. Yep. Um, all right. Well, we're talking about these other shoulder injuries. Now, Miles Sanders also practiced in full today. So I guess there's really no injury concern there that we have to worry about. Uh, we can uh, see- not, not really. They, they already said it wasn't a big deal from the start. But, My suspicion is it's just a mild uh, injury. We don't know the details. If it was a fracture, he'd definitely be out. If it was a rotator cuff, which is not very common for this type of injury, um, uh, he, he'd probably be okay to go. It's probably a shoulder sprain, if I were to guess, but it's going to be like the mildest of mild, um, whereas Connors, and we'll talk about him in a sec, uh, is, is not as mild. Uh, so I think that you really don't worry about Sanders. He's been really good in the passing game. Yeah. Uh, just just lighting people up and, and, and looking fantastic. So I think that continues. I think Howard continues to get the backs. Sproles will eventually be back. I don't think he's going to be back this week. Okay. Yeah. Um, he's not someone I'm dying to get into my lineup right away, Sanders, I'm, I'm referring to. Um, but he's, he's just shown so many explosive plays that, you know, he's, he's more fun in theory than I think actually having in your lineup. This year. It's a guessing game with him. But Connor, like you said, is dealing with a little bit more of a serious injury here. He's got an AC sprain. And they told us that he was going to be limited to start the week, but he hasn't suited up at all Wednesday. He did not suit it up, suit up at all today on Thursday. Uh, Benny Snell is going to be out for two to three weeks. So that leaves a possible James Conner playing um, at, 
you know, whatever percentage he would be at with his shoulder injury. And then Jalen Samuels is back from his knee injury. He should be, they said he could have played last week. So he'll be basically a hundred percent ready to roll this week as their workhorse. Uh, now with James Conner, can you kind of explain this, I, I guess, a little bit more in depth in terms of the AC sprain and what that yep. does to a running back? I treated one of these yesterday, actually. Okay. Um, very common injury, uh, usually landing directly on the top of your shoulder. So think of riding a bicycle, flipping over the handlebars and landing directly in your shoulder. That's kind of how you have to do this in order to sprain it. The uh, AC joint is where the shoulder meets the clavicle. So on the top of your shoulder where the bird's sitting. And if you, um, it, what can happen is you, there's ligaments that hold everything on both sides. And what can happen is you can, you land on it and they can have a little bit of a twist. Uh, you can have a little bit of a tear or a significant tear where the bone actually moves. Um, the severity of the tearing of the ligaments will depend on how bad the tear, uh, how bad the injury is. So if it's mild, all the ligaments look fine. There's just a lot of swelling. That's probably what Miles Sanders had, has. Um, whereas James Conner may have more of like a grade two, which is some partial tearing of those ligaments. Still very painful, uh, but not surgery related. Just takes a couple of weeks to get better. This is really important for anything overhead or kind of in, a, in an awkward angle like that. Okay. Uh, so think of grabbing your seatbelt, that kind of motion uh, with say your right shoulder and you're grabbing across your body, that is AC joint. Okay. Uh, so anything, and it really hurts. And these guys usually are in slings for a week to two weeks. Uh, if they're a little more severe, sometimes three or four weeks. So I wouldn't be surprised if it, he missed this week. I have him at 30% right now. Um, we already know Benny Snell's going to be out. He had a meniscal tear of himself. And now Jalen Samuels coming back from menis meniscal tear sounds like he's probably going to get the workload in a smash spot. Yeah, that's uh, it's not good to hear because I'm going up against a lot of Jalen Samuels this week. Is this like – I know you said you probably expect him to – well, not maybe probably, but there's a good chance that he does end up sitting. Um, is, is this something that he could just go through like – pain pain tolerance like maybe they use him in a limited fashion like if it's his right shoulder maybe run the ball to the right so he could hit guys with his left I don't know how much that's that that's a reach well, um, guys don't typically like to return with this early because it freaking hurts man I feel like Connors just battles through his injuries though and he's just like I'm gonna yeah I mean yeah. there's okay so so you can drop cortisone in these or just numbing medicine in these and then numb it up okay that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, it's doing the joint any good because you're playing through pain and through an injury that is probably going to get worse with all the hits that a running back is going to take. Um, you can put PRP in there. That's what Jameis had a couple of years ago, and he got back and he's throwing shoulder in a couple of weeks. Um, but these these just take time, and you don't want to dislocate that uh, clavicle or tear those ligaments anymore because you're you're leading from something non-surgical to surgical. Okay. Which is still bad. That's just a rough road to go down. Yeah, and, no and if you reason. don't, uh, then, then the shoulder's never the same. It just never feels the same. So I would not – if this is – if he doesn't practice at least in some capacity tomorrow, I would be very, very surprised if he doesn't play. Yeah, me too. I think you, know, yeah, you, you kind of have to suit up on, on the Friday to, in order to play that week. Talking about someone who might be suiting up semi-soon, we got Darius Geis in this Redskins backfield. Coming back from another knee surgery, of course, um, he can't play until week 11. But it does beg the question, like, this Redskins offense has been putrid, but their run blocking actually ranks, I believe it was 13th per PFF. Their rest of season schedule, when he gets back in week 11, and I'll put the chart on the screen, is extremely, extremely easy against the run. The Jets, the Lions, Carolina, Green Bay, Philly in week 15 is their tough matchup, and then yeah. the Giants. So it's five of six games are very, very easy. Four out of the six games are at home. So guys, like, you know, coming back from all this nonsense, is there a scenario in which you see guys being able to actually handle a load? Because we've seen them give the ball to Adrian Peterson, you know, 20 times in a game, no questions asked. Chris Thompson's dealing with this ankle. We don't know when he's going to be back. Um, is there a chance that guys comes back here and for the last like five weeks of the fantasy season is, a, is an 18 touch guy? Yes. Yeah. I think he is a very good by low. I think his ACL is starting to become more and more healed. I think this knee other, the, the meniscal tear is just unfortunate, but he'll be semi close to 
uh, 80% in the next week or so. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, in the next two weeks, we'll say, um, I think that, um, they will want to rush him. I think Adrian Peterson is on his last legs uh, like yeah. for like the third year in a row. Um, <laughs> he's banged up with his own high ankle and maybe even a low ankle as well. Um, and then Chris Thompson, I think it's a turf toe or whatever it is. I'm pretty sure it's a turf toe, but he's, the, as we know, with Devontae, these aren't exactly quick. And, and Chris Thompson has a great history of being good when he's healthy, but you just MIA when he's not. Uh, so this could, in, in two, three weeks, you could be seeing the emergence of Darius Geis. Yeah. Uh, and I think that would be realistic. So if he's on your wire or if you can get him for cheap, not the worst buy low. Yeah. I mean, he's probably floating around a ton of wires so people could pick him up. My thing is, too, it's like it's this Redskins team is obviously in shambles. I think, like, this can't be a complete lost season again for guys. They need to I, he, they need to get him onto the field and let him, you know, get back into that, you know, I'm an NFL running back mode and have him at least go into the offseason, like, with some confidence, ready yep. for next year, like, full go. You can't just not have him play or get, like, five carries a game because he never gets back. The confidence is a big thing, especially at the running back. Oh, position. yeah. And you need to, you, you know, you need to instill that in him to have like a full off season and have them ready to roll even into next season. So I do think they fire up guys just given the fact that it's almost at the point where it's just like, we don't give a shit. We have Dwayne Haskins at our quarterback. Like let's see the, the young talent that we have and let them uh, hopefully surprise um, some people. Now talking about surprising would be Brandon Cook suiting up after their bye week suffers a concussion, which is his second documented of this year. I believe it's, I, I don't even know at this point how many he's documented in his career, but it's getting to almost like a career threatening number of concussions. Correct. Again, these are brain injuries and these are real fucking people that are going out there and playing football. They're not just uh, names or numbers on our fantasy football teams. Sometimes it seems like that, but Conco, I mean, are they going to play? They, they got to play some on the IR, no? God, I hope so. Um, I want, like they finally uh, put Jordan Reed to rest with his concussion. Yeah. I think that uh, they, will give – they have the luxury of giving uh, Cooks a couple more weeks. Um, and, and, and this team is good enough to make the playoffs, so they may kind of want to selectively use them then. So that may be one of the reasons why they're potentially going to hold off on IR. But, man, his, his risk so high right now. Yeah. I mean, there's a theoretical risk of up to seven-fold increase within 90 days of a concussion. That's, That's why I mean. it's like you know. if you're the Rams and you you put Cooper uh, you put uh, Cooks back on the field in like week 11 or week 12. God forbid he suffers another concussion. It's like th that franchise really fucked him up for life. You know what I mean? Like that's it's, yeah. I mean, this a lot of it is his play, but a lot of these guys always want to play. Yeah, um, knowing when to say enough is enough. I mean, so the problem is his risk will never decrease. So this is a a permanent risk. Okay. So he's going to have to accept this risk and say, I'm completely okay giving up football and moving on. If he's not able to do that, then the Rams are kind of in a pickle because yeah. they can tell him they're worried about him and they're concerned, but at the end of the day, it's his decision. Um, uh, some people will say three concussions in a year. There really isn't any hard and fast rules. Um, as long as he does not come back on the field before the first concussion has resolved, the current concussion has resolved. That's the most important part. If he comes back when he's quote unquote healthy, then while he's at increased risk for another one, he is okay. Let me ask you something. How many concussions do you think go unnoticed in the NFL like in a typical game I mean they're obviously really clamping down on the rules and making sure there's a guy watching you know the field at all times and it, it might be I'm, I don't really know this from a medical standpoint but it might be very hard to play off concussion and pretend like you don't have one uh, do you think like any of these guys that suffer concussions you know you say that for the next 90 days they're at a higher risk but is it possible that some of these guys have concussions just stay on the field no one notices it and then that like re-injury risk is still on the field with them while they're, you know, playing in that same exact game. And that's when the real concussion happens. Correct. Know? So uh, nowadays, the past two, three years, they are really, really harping on concussions. Right. Uh, which is good. Um, up until then, I would not be surprised if we missed one to three concussions a game. 
Jeez. Like per game, per game that's on, on TV or whatever. Um, Gronk recently came out, maybe not a month ago, less than a month ago, saying that in my career I had at least 10 concussions and at least five that caused me to black out. Jeez. So, like, they, these guys are pretty good at playing them off. But they're some people. They're depending on how they're affected. Are so disoriented, so miserable, so lost on the field and just with everything that they can't fake it, even if they wanted to. Okay. Um. So every every concussion's different. Everybody's different at different phases of the concussion. They're hard to give you a hard and fast. Um, I've had some people that only came and admitted it because they know they're scary, and then others that knew that if they said anything, they were going to be shut down and they wanted to play. So they didn't say anything. Gotcha. Uh, I think we've instilled enough fear in players that they are actively saying, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I know how big of a deal this could be in the long run and I don't want to risk that. So please let's do what we have to do to correct this. I mean, famous uh, hockey player, Sidney Crosby missed an entire year with a concussion. Um, and he that. eventually needed uh, some manipulation to move his uh, the top vertebrae over about a millimeter or two, which then finally corrected his headaches, which then finally allowed him to get back. That's so, wild. like, some people just never feel the same or just forever. Um, so and, – and some people have a genetic um, – I'm trying not to get too in-depth, but – genetic variant, a genetic predisposition, we'll say, that where their brain is a little higher in their skull than some other people. So they are at higher risk for getting concussions in general, and then they're at higher risk uh, for getting them with lower impact. So say you take a hit, not a big deal. A person who has this gets a hit and they have a concussion. So And then, and then the other kind of thought that I'll add here is all of these micro blows with all the linemen, constantly banging there's data to prove that they actually uh, undergo a lot of concussions as well but they're usually just not as severe or you know symptomatically severe because they're not the dbs or the wide receivers that are going smashed at high speed because the the, the linemen are rarely you know going fast they're just close um so so it's a it's a fascinating question and there's really no good answer but it's a slippery slope yeah, I, I think like as we're seeing the NFL take this way more seriously, and I'm sure it's only from a selfish standpoint because they know they're going to have to answer all these questions about oh, CBD yeah. in the future. Uh, a lot of the players are, yeah, exactly. A lot of the players are starting to see like these older players, right? We didn't have this kind of information 20 years ago to look back 20 years, right? So 40 years ago, but now we're seeing players from 20 years ago develop all these symptoms and the players now are like, I don't want to be like that. And it's getting to the point, or it will within the next five to 10 years, you know, if you were doing, if, if you wanted to quit because of concussions 20 years ago, everyone would call you a pussy. But now you just need a few players to stand up and be like, I'm going to leave the game because I'm worried about my health. That will start trickling over. I think it will take like one or two popular players in order to do this. I don't want to see it happen, obviously, but like, I think it eventually will happen because we'll get more information. We'll get more studies done and uh, it'll start becoming a scary thing for a lot of the players out there. So We'll see how long Brandon Cooks is out there for. But like you said, I mean, these players always want to get back on the field. They don't want to lose their spot. They don't want to lose that money, whatever, whatever. If he is out, Josh Reynolds is the next guy up. Yeah. Not, not too confident in him just because this offense has not really been able to hold up more than Cooper Cup as a fantasy-relevant wide receiver. Gerald Everett probably gets a little bit of a boost as a guy who's been playing yeah. really well at tight end. Um, that's really with how, with how shallow tight end is, I think Everett is every must start every week. Yeah, pretty much at this point. Because he's, like, he's, he's a playmaker with the ball in his hands, too. So it's not just like someone like Cameron Brait, who we'll talk about in a second, is just, you know, sitting there. And if, if a ball happens to fall into his lap while he's in the end zone, he returns some fantasy value for you. But Everett's a guy who can go up, get the ball, make plays after. And he's getting a lot of targets from Goff. So uh, I really, really like Gerald Everett going forward. Now, T.Y. Hilton is dealing with something because he was not seen at practice on Wednesday, dealing with some calf injury, and then was downgraded to did not practice on Thursday. So he's not practiced at all. Uh, they got the 1 o'clock game on Sunday. You're saying that this is obviously a concern. I mean, anytime you just randomly start missing practices left and right, it's got to be a concern. Yeah, I don't like midweek absences that aren't scheduled days off, which is usually Wednesday. 
Yeah. Um, we saw, if you want to reference the same team, same philosophy, uh, Marlon Mack come back very, very quickly from a calf strain and continue right. to play. And I don't even think he missed a week. So uh, not all calf strains are created equal, but uh, depending on how he's feeling, I would not be surprised if he played. I, I'm not happy about it. Uh, but I think that at this time, I call him 50-50. Okay. Um, and if he, if he gets in a limited practice tomorrow, I think he, he's probably a pretty good go. If he doesn't practice tomorrow, he's probably going to be more of a game-time decision, and I, I would feel less confident in him, regardless of the matchup, just in general. Yeah, and he, he missed a little bit of time earlier in the year, and I'm trying to figure out which game it was. One, two, three, four. The quad. He missed, yeah, he missed week four with the quad. And, and then he, he left early the he left early one week. I mean, he had that monster game and he ended at like halftime or less than halftime, and then he missed the following week. Yeah, so I'm trying to figure out, you know, in case he does miss this time, it looks like both tight ends uh had pretty good games. Ebron, Pascal has, has has started to run a ton of routes. Yeah, exactly. He, he hasn't Pascal's really been. produced, but he's run a ton of routes. He had a real big game a couple weeks ago. I just don't know if he's really built to be that number one guy and take that yeah. attention. But I think this this plays nicely into the tight ends because yeah. um, Ebron, he had five targets that game. He caught one pass for 48 yards and a touchdown. Doyle had eight targets, caught four passes, 22 yards and a touchdown. So I think both of them become uh, viable streamers in a game where they're playing against this uh, the Steelers defense, who has been pretty tough. But uh, I think they just become streamers by default if T.Y. misses. Yeah, and Doyle is up for the groin, but I think uh, it's, I, that's not the worst play, especially how shallow the, the tight ends are. Yeah, I mean, Doyle, uh, he, I mean, he played through it last week, but Ebron actually yeah. came up on the injury report this this week as well, too. I don't think he practiced today oh, either. I didn't see that. So I that could, that could funnel good. into Doyle's targets as well. Let me see. Yeah, he didn't practice on Thursday because of an ankle injury uh, because he was not listed on the Wednesday injury report. So I guess we'll have to get a little bit more news on that. So keep an eye on that. Doyle becomes a, probably a great streaming option if both Ebron and T.Y. Hilton are out. Um, talking about streaming options, I mean, we have Delaney Walker dealing with this ankle injury, and that forced him to miss last week. He's been dealing with it for a while. Jonu Smith filled in, played really well, caught six balls, yeah. 70 something yards, and a touchdown. He gets a much tougher matchup this week against Carolina. Uh, he'll have to see a lot of Luke Keekley, who's obviously one of the better coverage cornerbacks in the NFL. Um, so if Jonu Smith is going and Delaney Walker misses time again, then uh, Jonu is a borderline tight end one. I'd say the matchup probably pushes him down uh, a little bit. Um, but we have uh, some news out of Tampa Bay. O.J. Howard, Cameron Brait, both are missing practices. Um, O.J. Howard's dealing with a hamstring injury, which, you know, we've touched on a few times already. Um, well, probably dozens and dozens of times throughout the videos that we've done together. But now Cameron Brait dealing with some rib injury. Rib. He returned to, rib. Yeah. yeah, he returned to practice today, so in a limited fashion. So I guess he's still someone that you could – kind of throw onto the streaming radar. But, I mean, he wasn't really good last year when Howard went to the IR, and he's been shit since then. So I don't even really know if he's worth talking about as a streaming option. I think you go – I don't think Delaney Walker plays. You remember, he's like 38 or 39. These guys just don't heal as quickly as your 22-year-olds. They don't. He came he, – remember he had like season-ending – I think it was ankle surgery last year. It could be the same ankle. It doesn't have to be. Um, they just don't heal like we want them to when we're 15, 20 years younger. Um, the Cameron Bray, OJ Howard situation, I think Cameron Bray will probably play. I don't feel super comfortable in playing him, uh, despite a very good matchup. Um, I think OJ Howard is probably not going to play. I just got a bad feeling. Uh, and, and, and can you really trust them? Like between injury and just oh. how crazy awful he's been. Yeah, if he plays, I don't think I could trust him. No, definitely not. What about Chris Herndon, though? Is it is it officially Chris Herndon season? If he plays, can we trust him? Uh, yes. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm at, he's at sixty percent right now. I think that if he practices again tomorrow, he's probably close to eighty or ninety percent in terms of ability to play. Um, and I think once he gets in the field, he'll be good. Um, I, I have a weird inkling that he's going to re-injure it if he plays. I just – I don't know why. I just have this feeling. Um, but I want him to stay – they have a awesome, awesome matchup or, you know, sh sh slate coming up. Um, so they kind of need him, I mean, just to show what this team could potentially do. They're not going anywhere. Um, Herndon owners are, are the thirstiest owners out there, man. I know. I, I, I'm going to call them 60 to 70% right now. But at this time – 
I think there's a chance he returns, uh, but I wouldn't expect full ham mode uh, until next week um, to get his feet wet, but also to make sure he doesn't re-injure it. Got you. All right. Well, that's all the players we got. Doc, I got one more question for you. When you used yeah. to – when you used to trick or treat and you would come across a bowl that said, please take one, Jesus is watching. How many are you taking? I, I, I'm one of those responsible people that I will only take one. I got to get out of here. I'm, I'm done with you. I'm taking 50. I'm taking the entire bowl and I'm running with that shit. Come I know on. you are, but, but <laughs> I, know, I know you are. What does that problem. mean? Tonight, uh, in my community, I will put that same damn bowl out. And if I only put one bowl out with some, under a certain number of candy, and if one person takes all of them, I'm not refilling that damn bowl. Well, that's the other thing. I'm thinking of ways to finesse myself when I'm like actually grown, you know, and I got children coming to my house and shit. Ain't no one coming to my apartment today. I'm thinking about <laughs> putting a bowl out with no candy to begin with and putting a one, oh, take, one, take one, please. And then in that sense, you know, it looks like I'm a good guy and they just took all the candy. I never refilled it, but like no one's going to refill it. So I, I feel like you're going to, you're going to kill a kid's dreams for 10, to, for, for, for $10 with the they candy. Don't need, they don't need the damn candy. You know what happens? They eat the candy. They end up in your office and they're dealing with it. <laughs> oh yeah. The fat kids, kids are going to get fatter, but, but <laughs> fat kids got to yeah. eat baby. That's what the yeah. channel. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to end up in a dentist office before they end up in mine. <laughs> yeah, um, you're right about but, that. But, uh, no, uh, let the kids have fun. The, the, the parents should be responsible enough to give them, you know, an allowance of candy, not allow them to eat five Snickers on day one. Yeah, you're you know, right. Big right. Ones, you're talking like the regular, legit ones. For all the for all the parents out there, do never never listen to my advice, please, never ever. <laughs> but do listen to Doctor Morse's advice if you want Arr. more. Of his, <laughs> if you want more of his advice, you can go follow him on Twitter at Doctor Jesse Morse. You can go follow all the fancy doctor stuff, which will be linked in the description down below. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. Normally, we'll be putting this video out on Thursday. It was just a different sequence of events because of our filming behind the scenes. Don't worry about that stuff. We'll be back to our regularly scheduled programming next week. We're out of here. Thank you, Doc.